Wow. Is it okay to put a whiskey bottle in your freezer? Oh, I don't. I do it with gin. Yeah, I do. I do it with gin too. Basically, we're talking about is it going to impact the flavor? All right, guys. Fair warning. This episode went very much off the rails. It did not go according to plan. We were pretty sure what the results were going to be before we even went into it. We we're just going to make an episode that we can point to whenever people ask this very common question, but we were quite frankly shocked about what we had experienced in our glass. Tried to do some follow-ups. We do not come to a satisfying conclusion in this episode, be warned. But before you comment about something that you're absolutely sure of, go and watch the whole thing just to see how things got weird. You may be totally right, but we're going to have to do some follow-up. Now, what do we already know about temperature and its impact on a flavor when it comes to whiskey? So we do know that temperature alters what you can taste. Your, your palate is not actually equipped to really interpret things at extreme temperatures. Right. And depending on what is extreme hot or extreme cold, you lose or gain or accent certain things. Yeah. So, so does it change the flavor? Absolutely. But it changes it? your ability to taste flavor. Yes. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the freezer broke it. Yeah. It could just mean that it's cold. When it comes to storing whiskey, you don't want it in like a really hot area and you know, you don't want crazy fluctuations in temperatures. Right. Will it change the intrinsic flavor and character of a whiskey if you take it down to freezing? And then bring and then, it back. And then, yeah, so we're gonna compare something, the exact, exact same whiskey from mm. the exact same bottle. We okay. got a few different bottles. We're gonna compare one that never went to a freezer, okay. one that went to a freezer for two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah, just see if there's a difference. A bourbon, a scotch, and an Irish. These are made, you know, differently. Right. This has like a different process for bourbon. This is new oak. Maybe there's like tannins and stuff in oak that react to temperature and something. Maybe the, the heat doesn't... smoke changes things. Oh, yeah. Hot still. All right. You wanna start with the bourbon? All right. Classic bottle storage technique mm -hmm. glass. Frozen and brought back to room temp glass. My theory is that nothing happened. Yeah. Well, is the cork? It was seems a, it's a screw, screw top. top. Yeah. So that'll so be fine. I think nothing happened. Okay. And it's the same bottle, so we can't even have flavor drift on bottle to bottle. Yeah, yeah. Which one do you want to start with? Uh, the the bottle version. Okay. Yeah. Cherry. Honey, classic. Yeah. yeah the brown sugar. And there's the oakiness. That corn dust and grain forward. Little molasses. Frozen. Are you getting a difference? It was a, hold on. It's a little thinner. It, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's softer. It is oh, more subdued. That can't be real. You know, come on, there's gotta be. Let's give it a few minutes in the glass because maybe it's headspace, right? Maybe there's a lot of headspace in here. Right. And there was very little in here. They were in bottles of the same size. So I just heard from Beater. Apparently, these were kept in bottles the exact same size. Uh, so, so headspace isn't an issue. He only shrunk it down for us to do the episode. Yeah. But not. Okay. 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 So All it's right, not a headspace thing. It's. It broke it. Like. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's 15, 20% difference. If I had to narrow it down to a single word, mm -hmm. it would be more subdued. If I had to narrow it down, it would be thinner. Okay. Wow, we go. I was not expecting that noticeable difference. Mm -mm. And there's the Johnny Drum. Classic unfurling molasses and cherry and chocolate. Ooh, lots of cherry. And then... Softer Dude, and thinner. Right, here's what I'm... Both. All right, really quick. Were these dry? Was there water in them when you put them in? No. Wow. No, it tastes softer and less complex. Okay. We've been asked this question. And we're like, nah, it's, it's fine. fine. You know, it comes back up to room temperature. Are we proving ourselves wrong? So let's, let's not conclude we're, that yet. Maybe it's for, maybe there's something intrinsic to bourbon that would allow it to be that big of a difference. All right, before we conclude that we're wrong, which I am unwilling to do. Those were different. Yeah. They were recognizably different. Yes. The exact same bottle, yes. the exact same amount. One was in the freezer for two right. weeks and the other was just chilling out, being stored in regular room. And they were very different. But we're not wrong. Uh, I would say not very different, recognizably different. Yeah, 15%. Okay, so let's move on to a different category. Okay. Uh, right is okay. the regular. Yeah. Okay. Gonna let it aerate a little bit here, see if... Now I'm thinking back now, now that I've had some time. Yes. And I'm remembering that what I said was, if you put it in the freezer, there's probably like a 15% difference. Okay, so, you know, <laughs> I'm way too lazy to go back 
and find the clips. That's what I'm counting on. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, if someone makes you angry by putting your freeze, uh, whiskey in the freezer and you pull it out, it has not ruined the whiskey. <laughs> All right, original bottled version. I do uh, like to be pretty. I like the red breast. That's sort of uh, almost musty. Vanilla uh, cream shortbread cookie. Yeah, vanilla cream shortbread cookie and basement musty humidity. Oh, it's so soft and pretty. How would you get lighter with that? This is such a, an easy sipping, smooth, accessible whiskey. The proof isn't very high, but the flavors are just so, so friendly. I'm noticing the same thing that I described on the last one as it's thinner. Subdued. Yeah. Yeah. On the nose, we're going on for On the it. nose. Oh, whoa, that's on the palate significantly different. This was just kind of like, you know what, we've always said this, we've never done our due diligence. Let's just make it happen just so we can have done the work. And whenever we get the question, we can point people to an episode. You like your whiskey cold, you put it in the freezer, think ahead a little bit. You don't have to water it down with ice, it's a great solution. What's our responsibility here? <laughs> it's like, well, I don't have any because I remember saying it's. It, there's actually a bigger impact on Irish whiskey than there is on bourbon. Uh huh. It has not ruined the whiskey. You think there's a bigger impact on, well, the, on Irish? the palate? On the palate? On the palate. The nose, I think, has the same variance of like a 10% more subdued, a little thinner nose. The palate, the Irish, is a bigger difference to me. It's flatter. All right, let's see if our big wee beastie can stand up to the, the drama. This episode brought to you by Helix. These are basically super convenient, really nice quality mattresses that come to your door in a box. We own two Helixes. Now, we have the big old California King, and then we also have a full size in the upstairs guest room, which we love. One big thing to keep in mind is there's not a perfect mattress for every single person. It's just like whiskey. You gotta find the right one for you. That's why Helix has the sleep quiz, so you can answer a handful of questions and get the recommendations of what they think is going to be just right for you. And the best news is there is a 100-day sleep trial, so just in case you didn't get the right one for you, they will come pick up the mattress and you will get a full refund. So we're gonna jump into my house and show you the actual experience of setting up your Helix. Unroll it, unfold it. Ah, oh, bold move. Shoes on the bed. The wife, one room over, could walk in at any time. But this man, he is the man who gets things done. Look at this technique. Look at the muscles. Oh, then you realize it's upside down. No worries, we got this. Just this is a critical moment and nice little scissors, little hole. Oh yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize is your helix comes in a free bed sleeve. Very innovative. First you gotta open up the pocket and you just slide in. That's nice. That's comfortable. Just let yourself relax. Shallow breaths. And you're gone. Oh God, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Oh my God, what's happening? Where am I? What's happening? If you're looking for a new bed, it's definitely worth checking out Helix. You can go to helixsleep.com slash whiskey. You get up to $200 off and then free pillows. Whiskey. For those that are unfamiliar with the yard big, uh, it's Isla. This is the peaty, the smoky, the like the savory, briny. Often, give it a moment. <laughs> oh, that smells good. Just like a peppered bacon. Yeah, just peppered smoked ham. But you know what's weird? It smells like before it got cooked. It is more ham than bacon. Yeah, you know what it is? It's like you smoke the ham, some pepper crust on the outside. You had leftovers, you put it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And it's the fridge, the cold ham. Yeah, mm. all right. Kind of light, briny, uh, green, actually. Veg ve like vegetation, like mossy. Thin smoke moss, yeah. Mossy, yeah. Oh, wait. Okay, the nose is absolutely same thing. It is. But the smoke is standing up a little better yeah, than the yeah, others. It is a little bit harder to pull back the curtain on the smoke and get that density difference, but it's there, I think. It left behind the smoke, but it dropped the that ham proteiny heft. Oh, the palate. A little more flat. 
Come on. Wow. Huh. Well. <laughs> so if somebody is kind of new to whiskey, I don't think they would notice a difference at all. I think That's if somebody true. really considered themselves like a connoisseur and enthusiast, they really picked apart the layers, they focused on it, then You'll it, it's one. a recognizable difference. As a matter of fact, the people who are new to whiskey without the subtlety and nuance might prefer the warmed up freezer version because yeah. it's softer and a little more approachable. Okay. This was an interesting result in and of itself. I yeah. did a little side project. So, uh, Brianna, can you pull out the bottles that are in the bottom of the freezer? There's like three or four. <laughs> Say, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't listening to either. Very cold. It's very cold. Right out of the freezer. I wanted to see if a bunch of hours in the freezer is going to change the cork because if the seal is compromised, then of course something's gonna. I mean, if anything, uh, the water ratio okay. is gonna start to. So this is where it gets very unscientific because I didn't have a way to measure force to remove the cork. Right, so I recorded feeling. myself doing it, but I remember that's solid. That's, well, hold on. Now that one's solid. Okay, it may be more solid. Hmm. Warm. See, that was still pretty soft. Yeah, see, maybe see, it was. See, I wanted little, okay. little spoilers. <laughs> oh, you have to do it. <laughs> this. Was it fine when you put it in? This is the bulking. This okay. is everything. Okay. You, so, really quick though, I gotta go through. Oh, this is solid. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. That, that, this is synthetic. Oh. Oh, yeah. Synthetic. This is. That's fine. Okay. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, hold on. That's pretty, it's pretty solid. Okay, now. <sighs> this one. Mm. This was already such a loose cork. You ever get a cork where once in a while you just barely... Whoa. Right, you saw that? I did, that's so, like the top of a decanter. Here's the test. I recorded this mm. being just barely, perfectly tight enough to go upside down and shake it, right. but it didn't come out. If I go upside down... That's gonna fall out. Well, I'm saying, but then there is constriction of the cork. Yeah. And if you got a cork like this, then absolutely you're and, compromised to the air. And how will you know until you do it? That's the problem. Oh God, yeah. Okay. So, and you won't, the problem with that is you yeah. won't know. Yeah. So I've had gin bottles right. that did that, yeah. but I've also had the gin bottle from the same brand not do that. Dude, there's nothing here now. Nothing. Before, before I was able to... At least maintain some size. Yeah, so in conclusion, uh, do you want to put your whiskey in the freezer? If you want to cool it off and not dilute it, I still think it's fine. It's, it's not like it absolutely destroys but the But maybe whiskey. not like your special edition one. Yeah. Like maybe make it one you can easily replace the yeah. next day, like a, you know, a monkey shoulder, a Lafroy, If you're or... trying to explore whiskey and figure out what is that whiskey doing at its purest form, if you put it in the freezer and let it come back, it does lose a half step, yeah. which is very surprising. Which parts of this should we be embarrassed by and which parts should we feel proud to bring well, you practical, helpful since information? Since this is what I've been trying to explain to people for years. <laughs> it's a very unexpected and interesting result. So to put it to the test, we did some blind pours for five people. So here's them doing that now. All right. Smell, the one on the right smells smoother. This one has a similar, like, spiciness to it, okay. to this one, Yeah. but it's softer. And the one on the left tastes way smoother. This one. They taste kind of the same, but this one still smells more flavory. This one, flavor, smell. This one, not much. This tastes like Pine's Hole. This tastes like whiskey. The left is a little more muted. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. Okay. These are both very soft. This one is way more uh, smooth and subtle than this one. The one on the left is way smoother than the one on the right. The left is worse. These feel really similar. Okay. I don't know if I could pick one. Okay. You better not be mind f***ing me. <laughs> 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 Let's go to the 
last sample. Mm. That's buttery. <laughs> God damn, that's gross. <laughs> I'm not, not a fan of the Isla, huh? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. This one is more subtle. It's more subtle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, I'm gonna go with left is better. Right has a chemically taste to it. Definitely not as bad. One on the right, not as bad as one on the left. These ones are kind of feeling the same for me too. Maybe this one's a little smoother, but it's too close to tell. The right's a lot more muted. It's probably smoother. Left is a lot more dense. <laughs> In conclusion. <laughs> it's kind of all over the map on the results here. It was all over the place. Because whenever Daniel and I first did it, mm -hmm. it had come up to room temperature. There still wasn't a temperature yes. difference, but there's definitely a taste difference. Immediately after we shot, it was, yeah. you know, you weren't on camera, mm -hmm. but you were like, wow, this is a huge difference. Fully agree. So we wait like a day or two later. Yes. We do blind pours, and then the results are kind of like all over the map. So could something have happened to the intrinsic, like the, the molecular stuff in the whiskey? Yeah. Uh, we reached out to who? Oh, we talked to chemists, we talked to chemical engineers, talked to food scientists, right. trying to figure out what's going on here. The most solid theory we got was from the food scientists. Okay. There are hundreds or thousands of compounds in whiskey, and they have different thermal masses. It takes a lot of energy to make water warm up, less so to make alcohol warm up. So the thinking is that the water in the whiskey was still cold or there were still not ice crystals or anything, but it was still cold enough to where the molecules are entangled or something. And that could dull the flavors, which matches. But it wasn't cold, though. It wasn't cold. It did not feel cold, but parts of it still were. So, you know, it's it, it sounds had not like completely warmed up. Sounds like. Yes. You get in a cold pool. Mm -hmm. You get shrinkage. A little bit. And then you come back out of the pool, shrinkage is still there, it needs a minute, even though thermally you're back at room temperature, but the shrinkage it has to unconstrict. Relax a little bit. Right. So, so we just needed a couple days for the whiskey to relax back a little bit. And right. the, what we came up with is- We is were tasting shrinkage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter just had a phone call. How'd the phone call go, Peter? I, I was talking to a uh, professor who teaches a class on wine and spirits uh, about <laughs> freezer whiskey. Yeah. And uh, the long and the short is we're going to do another episode. We'll do a follow-up. Full white coat. We're going to do proper science this time. <laughs>